the Chinatown Samsui art mural controversy. The same people who were defending the murals were the same people who were offended about Lee Shen Long's comments about people being hypersensitive. Shouldn't there be a like a uh, art focus group and then there can be a vote on it? The problem is the majority is not always right. Are you also a Samsui woman? <laughs> this is your daily ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> If you've been living under a rock and you haven't heard about the Chinatown Samsui Art Mural controversy, let me quickly catch you up. All right. So in early April, there was a Singapore-based artist. Oh, means not Singaporean. <laughs> you also not, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, like you also Singaporean-based. <laughs> That's, That's, well. well. That's what I can say. <laughs> so in early April, Singapore-based artist Sean Dunstan completed a mural in Chinatown depicting a Samsui woman taking a smoke break. And in on the 8th of May, the URA, which is the Urban Redevelopment Authority, so Urban. they own the buildings and shit, mm -hmm. uh, they ordered that the cigarette be removed from the mural mm. because the mural was not aligned with Singapore's anti-smoking policy stance. Mm. Then will the smoke still make sense? Uh, so there was a picture of people who <laughs> made it into a meme and then so they've been swapping out the item in her hand, right? And they changed it to like a cup of tea. Uh, uh, Lee Sien Long's tea cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, or like Mr. Lee Sien Long. Uh, yes, yeah. Yolo, Yolo no, but now he's not PM anymore. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and then I'll still respect him when I meet him. But, <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, welcome to the show. <laughs> okay, but anyway, so in a later email, URA then cited feedback from an unnamed member of the public saying that this woman that, is, that was depicted in the mural looks more like a prostitute than a hardworking Samsui woman. And this is offensive. So harsh. Hello. Actually, Hello. I, want to, I, I want to interrogate one this member. One by one, please. Oh, okay. You go. No, we are outraged <laughs> by this. <laughs> That's why we all no, reacted. I want to know what about it, right? From that member of the public, whoever you are, like, look like a prostitute. Okay. Like, is it the cigarette or is it the expression or what? They say they give like a Suzy Wong sultry look. What is a Suzy Wong? Who is Suzy Wong? Uh, she's a famous person. <laughs> I also don't know who she is. Is it offensive to Suzy Wong? <laughs> yes, yeah. Is it so Suzy Wong? Is like a prostitute? Yeah. What are you doing? Oh my God. She's from KL if I'm not wrong. Huh? She looks great. Oh. She looks great, but she looks sultry. La. Is Sorry, is, this, this is a sultry post, ma. This look like, this is pro what prostitute look like. No, this is the vibe that he was giving off. You know when I searched Samsui for this article, what, what came out? Samsui. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I thought, oh, if you look like that, can I? Yeah, this is the mirror. How is this similar? Like you looking at me like come hither is what the woman said. Sorry, is what another woman said on the Straits Times forum. So, huh? I mean, as you can, as you all have reacted, it's essentially what the public outcry has been about. So mm. people are saying that like, Firstly, this is an accurate historically depiction of some sweet women because they do take smoke breaks like in between their mm -hmm. work. Right. Yeah, and so- How these people know? What, there are pictures of actual Samsung lady on smoke break. Okay, good. Just checking. <laughs> on the, yeah, okay, on, we we love fact checking on this show. In the official library. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, so essentially URA has requested for a proposal of the revision of the mural to be submitted by the 3rd of July. And a failure to do so, they threatened that they will take into consideration this when the building's tenant is applying for renewal of the space. Mm. And their temporary uh, permit actually expires on 27th of July. Oh. To be slightly of a devil's advocate, I, right. if I'm not mistaken, right, there was a piece of information that was missing from that summary, which was very well done, which is that neither the landlord of the building nor the artist actually got approval before painting that mural. Mm. But if I'm the landlord, why I need approval? Yeah, tell us member of the <laughs> so, podcast who's based in Singapore. So as someone who obviously <laughs> has never painted a mural, but I've done renovations to my home, then I realized, hey, we want to install window. But window Wait, also- Wait, your house had no windows? We had no window on our service yet. So it was just open. Oh. Then because it affects the outward facade of the building, right? You also need to go and get a permit again. So whenever it affects, anything that people can see outside, you need to get permit. Wah. So I didn't know, but my, luckily the contractor that I- Then when people I, anyhow dry their clothes, hang their bra outside the window, also affect the external facade. No, that's, but that's why they put that at the back. Why where if you back? walk past, you cannot see. Ma. That's why you cannot install like the stick at the front. Ma. It's at the back. Back, hmm. back. So I would think that usually if you were to paint anything or to affect the outward facade that other people can see, there's usually a permit involved. And it's not like, it's not uncharacteristic. Like if you look at overseas, other cities also, there are places where you have to get 
permit or you have to work with a certain color or style so that the style of that city doesn't like change completely. Right? So you so know? let's say, let's say in this circumstance, they got the permits uh. and, and they still receive the same complaint. Then what happens? So I think they will still be asked to adjust it. Because actually I'm quite surprised because I'm not sure how many people actually wrote into the URA, but then yeah. in the email that they sent to the landlord or the landlord's representatives, they only cited this specific feedback. Right. And someone was asking, are public complaints given too much weight in censorship decisions? So that you know one person write in, yeah. then suddenly this whole mural has to change. You know what I mean? I think it comes down to what would you deem enough of an offense? Like, does it need to be majority of people find it offensive or does it need to be one person find it offensive? It's enough for it to be considered offensive. That's crazy though, because in anything you do, you will at least offend one person, you don't think? Yeah, I think where I'm coming from is that again, devil's advocate, because I think I'm going to anger a lot of people by saying this. Comments, But engagement. it's about engaging and finding the conversation to be had, right? Is mm. that what I thought interesting was that in my social circles, at least like in my following list on Instagram, right? The same people who were offended Oh no, sorry. The same people who were defending the mural saying, how dare you be offended by smoking or about the depiction of some women were the same people who were offended about Lee Shen Long's comments about wokeness and about people being hypersensitive. Mm. So then if you are complaining that other people are being hypersensitive over smoking, but you are usually hypersensitive about issues, how are you the person, the arbiter of what is offensive and not offensive? Right. Mm. How? Uh, okay, okay. I, I get that also. I get that. And I think it's a fair point, but I think it's very hard for us to establish or define here. Absolutely. How do I know when I should care about this and it's an important conversation that we should be discussing and right. I should go and read up about it and understand the nuance of it so that I, I can I can make, create an opinion, right? Versus um, me just thinking that like, oh yeah, it's cool. I don't really need to care about this. I think there is a large part of Mm. people that fall under that when it comes to this specific matter also because Mm. most of the people don't really care. It's like, actually before this, uh, before I delved into it for this episode, right? I was thinking like, huh, like why people want to argue over such a thing? Mm, Yeah. Like to to me, it was like, it's just a painting. Like like, I don't really care much about it. Maybe because I also don't really walk around the area or or what, sorry. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, so I, I think I think my, my process of thoughts, right, when the news started coming out was at first, why are people getting so offended by a cigarette? Mm. Then after it, then when I saw the huge outcry over that complaint, then I was like, why are people getting so offended by someone getting offended by a cigarette? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Then it's like, why are both sides getting so sensitive about this? No, so the but key maybe I'm missing thing, something. Yeah, I think this is not the main issue. It's like, for example, when your wife get upset at you, it's maybe not because you didn't wash the plates, but it's because of a right. long-standing issue. So in this case, the long-standing issue, issue is censorship in Singapore. And they feel like, why is it that okay. even for such a minor thing, right? The government feels the need to like step in and control the narrative. Yeah. Especially one that is historically accurate. Mm. I see. Fun fact at this point. So as in this smoking thing, right, is... Back then, the Samsung woman would even keep the cigarette underneath their head. Oh. Like the red color head and they store a cigarette pack there. Mm. So that during their break time, they can first go and smoke. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like if they remove the red head, then, then it's it just, just fall out. Oh, it's just <laughs> like under the head. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I guess there is, so, so okay, I think there's a lot of different parts of the debate that we're at, right? And so where we're at is, whether something should, if is historically accurate, should it be depicted as such? Or yes. should it then be adapted to modern audiences, right? So what if, it was, and I'm not saying it is, but what if it was historically accurate for these women to have been naked? Then if you paint a naked woman, there'll be more people that will get offended. What? Then wouldn't mm. you have a debate where it's like, but it's historically accurate, but it's offensive. Mm. To me, then why is historical accuracy- <laughs> Are you clapping for the, the naked woman the for all against? No, very good example to make his argument. Hey, thanks. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, are be- making yeah. a great devil so He's far. He's just trying to- find a reason to have naked women <laughs> <laughs> in, in public. But good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I can give another example, but I'm okay. still offend more people. Okay, like if this was it. America, and it's in history, they had slaves, ma. And then if someone were to paint a giant mural depicting slavery, wouldn't a whole bunch of people also get offended by it? Then some people are saying, no, but this is historical accurate. We should, we should appreciate where we came from and we changed. And other people are saying, no, we shouldn't be like glorifying this what, through art. So I think there's so many ways in which historical accuracy should not be the benchmark for something just because it happened. Your secular example doesn't stand though, because I think in that case, it is depicting something that caused people a lot of hurt. 
but a naked woman never anybody. So you see, so that, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, no, no. So, so, so we come back to, so we come back to smoking. Okay. At the end of the day, it's easy for a parent to say, I don't want my kid to look at, at the end of the day, this painting to me, cool. This woman looks damn cool. Agree. I don't want my kid to be looking at a cool woman smoking as though it's because she's smoking that's cool. Cause I'm confused. Like, why is she oh. so cool? Is it the smoking? Oh my God, smoking goes cool. Then to me- Then the parent cannot watch movies, cannot watch TV shows, cannot watch a lot of things, cannot consume a lot of content already. No, but there are parents that are like that and yeah. they limit what the children consume though. And then they themselves better not because their belief is that if you see, you will be influenced by- Okay, I, I, I'm very scared of getting cancer. So I want to say that I think the painting very cool, <laughs> ho, and I think my kid is allowed to say it, to see it. I'm just trying to and understand. We're trying to understand the I, other side. Yeah, and I much rather it be an accurate depiction so that, because if we keep recontextualizing and, and, and you know, the goalposts throughout time will keep shifting one, right, of what is acceptable and what yeah. is not, right? Mm. Then it doesn't open doors for us to, to, to have a conversation with our child about what life was like back then. The lessons that can be learned back then, the differences in in, in time, you know what I mean? Like, like if twenty years from now, cigarettes no longer exist in the world, mm-hmm. and then fifty years from now, it's really a, it's so far gone, right? That no, nobody knows what that is. If I if yeah. I say cigarette to a child, the child doesn't know what that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then a painting like that will give us an opportunity to talk about that life, like similar to like um the the fact that it's held by like a Samsui woman, right? So then now we are gonna start talking about. Samsung women. Who are Samsung women? Do you all even know what mm. Samsung women is, the yeah. history of it, why they came about and whatnot? And mm. then it paints a very nice picture for us of a, uh-huh. a part of Singapore paints that nice we might otherwise not even be talking about. What, uh, what's, so, what's interesting is that the art piece actually really did its job in terms of actually creating this conversation, getting more people to look into something that they might not have thought of and actually create discourse mm. between two sides who actually, we didn't know that there was an argument that we didn't know there were <laughs> exactly. two sides that existed. Mm. Yeah. So the art actually played its part. Yes, I would just like to say that you are right in the sense that this discourse has gotten a lot more people curious about some sway women because their Google search trend right has really spiked in Whoa. the past week. <laughs> so, well done, Mr. Dunstan. Yes, so the artist has mentioned that while he is unsure whether the artwork is going to be taken down because currently URA is saying, okay, let us review our stance since there's a public outcry, right? So mm. he feels happy still that it, the art has sparked a conversation, which is what a lot of artists feel like art should be doing. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So essentially, some sway women were, I mean, they are famous for having this like trademark headgear that they wear, right? And they are our construction workers of the past. Yep. Mm. Yeah. And so most of them actually originate from the Guangdong province in Southern China. And they essentially come to Singapore to work in order to support their families back home. Mm. Yeah, so actually a lot of them is very sad because they have to leave like their husbands and their kids behind. And then they come here and they, they wake up at 5 a.m. Then they immediately have to cook because they have to cook whatever is their entire day's worth of food. So they essentially meal prep for the day. Then <laughs> straight away go to work already. And then they are carrying bricks at a time where there's only stairs and no e- elevators mm. also, right? Then like heavy, heavy bricks that they have to carry throughout. And then they are working for 12 to 13 hours every day. And they're earning, I think, 50, to 50 or 60 cents. Right. Okay, I- but in, inflation, accounted for back then it was more than what we perceive 50 60 cents mm. to of be course. Yep, yep. and they I, had I, these buckets on yes. the back that's mm. what they used to carry the bricks mm. yeah do but we know what sort of buildings they were building like is, are those buildings still around building. today yeah. in of singapore course. are there like a hey, that building is built by some sweet woman kind I mean, did mr doesn't paint on a building that some sweet woman built uh, no, oh. no that if that i'm not wrong right they are in the construction <laughs> industry but they are not the ones built they are not the one actually it, doing the they, cement They are work. like transporting the materials okay. from one location like to another. Like porters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. What does Samsui right. right. mean? Sansui is the is the name of the city. Right, that yeah. they're from, yeah. okay. Also but it's like Sherpas. Sherpa is the name of the city. Sherpa is the name of <laughs> no, a specific porter, porter. group oh. of people. No, so they're not. Oh. Oh. Porters is the job. Sherpas is just a, a broad term. It's like Gurkhas, right? It's actually a group right. of people. Okay. Yeah, it's a oh. subset right. of the Nepalese. Yeah, so Samsu is, yeah, okay, okay. similar. Oh, we're learning so much. The, when I hear of this, right, then it takes me back, like I picture Ch- the old Chinatown where my where my mom actually grew up. I also, like, my grandma would tell me stories of like how when she was a child, what life was like, oh. all carefree and shit. And then like how her, her, her dad would bring her out at night to go and eat supper because she's the youngest daughter, yeah. that kind of thing, and she would just follow along. And mm. then like, 
they they have basically painted a very interesting picture. So like like a few of the things that stand out, right? Is like um when they were staying in a <laughs> HDB, but it's still like it's still considered high rise already, ma. Yeah. Then um what will happen is that there will be these people who sell like for example eggs or other groceries, uh-huh. and they would be downstairs because very much fun for them to go up and down, right? So instead they have like a pulley system of sorts at, out the back window. Mm-hmm. So you go there, then you have a basket, right? Then you will basically just shout up and down and tell them like, for example, I want like five eggs or what, right? <laughs> then you will put right. the amount inside. Oh. You will lower it, the basket oh. down. Then they will just put what you order inside. <laughs> then they will take their change and then they will- Why well, such a up. respectful yeah. system where I'm not mm. taking your money and running away? Eh? Mm. But back then, the kampung spirit. So they just have a giant spirit. push cut of everything, is it? Like mini yeah. mark or wheels. Something like that. Last yeah. time all the stores that mm. they cook food, all that is also push cut along the street. Yeah. My, yeah. my dad used to tell me the food, right? It's normally like uh, fishbone noodles, for example. Fish they were call, noodles? They were called Tencent. Then they were so poor, right? That their mom would just buy one packet of fishbone noodles. So it's just one fishbone and noodles. Then they will cut the <laughs> so fish ball, right, store. into very small pieces, right? Because wow. yeah. they are like six siblings, for uh. example. So everyone get like only one small piece wow. of fish ball. Then they will soak the noodles in the soup for at least like a few hours, right? Expand so it will get very big yeah. and expanded and then they cut it up and give everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Then the, like, my mom would tell me how like, I think if I'm not wrong, only maybe twice a year, once during Chinese New Year, for example, then they will have like meat. Mm. Outside mm. of that, they don't, they, they won't be able yeah. to eat it. They'll just have like the like simple side dishes with like porridge or rice mm. or something like so that. So you yeah. mean if I want to buy egg, right? I have to time and wait for the egg guy to come by. He probably come by every <laughs> like day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today I went over slept that I got no fish ball uh, to the table. No, but can you, you know, imagine like, like you never speak, right? So like it's just the money there. Then actually he give you the wrong amount of egg. Then you have to like, no, like you write a note, like one more, <laughs> then you put down, then he's like, but no, yeah. I really give you the same. Then it's like, you think that's like, very important do you think that seeing such depictions actually influences one's upbringing? Like growing up, right? Did y'all think that smoking was cool because y'all saw cool people smoking? Definitely. As yes. Yes. Hundred percent. This kind of thing. Yeah. Works so right. we are for the removal. No, we're not for. Uh, we don't mind. As uh, who are we? Then come down, lah. <laughs> As in, I def- like growing up, and you watch Fight Club, and you watch Brad Pitt smoking like almost every two minutes. Freaking cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like there's no way that you can watch something or see something and completely not be influenced by that, ma. Yeah. yeah. I think you can't have that independence. Or so the argument stands in this in this point. But I don't think it's enough of a reason to influence what art should be, la. But then this is art that is in a public space, though. Like say, if I painted this in my own home, right? Yeah. Then nobody will care, ma, because we, that's my own art, but this is art that I'm putting out in yeah. a sense on display where we, anybody I, can I, see. I, I think there is a difference. One is a historical, a depiction of something historical that is familiar to the local, like to, to, to the, the country, yeah. right? The other is paid psychological, uh, mind games sure. and marketing and all that to influence people to pick up smoking and make By people think tobacco. that- tobacco. Yeah, mm. that make people think that smoking is cool. Right. So there's a difference. One has a very, I I'm, I guess one is more intentional in terms of manipulation. Yeah, they're not, uh, is it? Is no, it but for the sake of arguing yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Your first point was that one is historical act, like depiction, right? Yeah, but yeah. not every, so a lot of people are saying there are photos of Samsung women smoking, but not every single video or not every single photo of a Samsung woman is of them smoking. Ma. Mm-hmm. So Samsung woman doesn't equal smoking woman. Why do you need to have a Samsung woman smoking for it to be historically accurate? You don't. Right. But is it because all the Samsung picture is always smoking? Right? No, 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 no. Usually they're the carrying thing. bricks. They just so happen to have some. La. Okay la. Make it do so big on the wall, then put smoking. So it comes back. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! What if, what, if, what if it's not? What if she's not smoking, right? But then she has the since the niece said the fact about they put the cigarettes yeah, in the yeah, hair. Yeah. Right? What if what if it was a like little box of cigarettes? Is it better? I don't think they will put the whole box inside the head. No, like, Maybe like they to, take the, out one or no, two. No, like to show that like you know at the year there's just one cigarette not smoking, uh, but it's at the year. Is that better? Oh. No, actually, I saw a very funny comment on the artist's Instagram page. Yeah. they say like she's not smoking, or she's just holding for her friend. <laughs> <laughs> Someone also said actually what he should do, right? Because he was thinking of how to remove it. He should just paint a no smoking sign. So then at least right, what you're saying is that smoking is bad. 
but she just so happened to be smoking. No, but then everyone's like, what a rebel, so cool, sexy that rebel. That was then the counter mm. argument also. <laughs> but I think it comes back down to like, I think one of my early points, which is where do you draw the line on what is offensive? Because naked woman, probably more offensive, more people think offensive. So yeah. then if naked woman is here and smoking is here, then where is actually the line where everybody's okay with? Yeah. Actually, some people not okay with. The, won't, it will never happen. No, but what they have Everybody's like, uh, boundaries are different, right? Agreed. But then where do you draw the line of trying to provoke trying to start a conversation, trying to be, cause like, I'm sure as the artist, we can't speak for him. So I'm just trying to assume, right? Yeah. He could have easily painted a Samsung woman without the cigarette. That's mm. the safest thing to do. Mm. It was a very intentional decision to put a cigarette there. Mm. Knowing that there is some risk. Mm -mm -mm. Can, so I, then, can why we see the painting again? Sorry, can we see the painting? I think, right, it's because he wanted to fill up the space with a simpler technique and he don't have to paint more building to fill up the whole right side. So, so smoke. Smoke, right? Mm. It's just, uh, just make white law. Mm. Ha, ha, ha. Actually, no. La. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it cuts off quite. Yeah. Okay, because that's the what woman. you're going to put in her hand. If, if you're going to already paint her sit, sitting sitting down. Yeah. A lunch box. Uh. Oh, I show you the variations that people have done. Oh, I saw one that was, um, people I think, have cup noodles. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this like perfume. Hey, watermelon. This one is the most historically accurate if you really, really want to argue that. No, but to make the smoke make sense, actually the teacup one, very nice. Yes. Mm. And someone you got Thank the you, Singapore. Yolo. Oh, what were those? It's Yolo. Dude. Oh, this is the actual some say women speak smoking oh. and young. Cause people say this is not histor historically accurate because some say women are old. No, but no. then the artists say they were young ones, ma. <laughs> it's not so much that they're young, but if you can it's see, they are like, there's grime on them. They are like sweating. Mm. But this one looks very clean, like she's modeling almost. <laughs> you know? yeah. That's very historically accurate, whatever you're doing. So do you think, right, if right now the URA reverses their stance, do you think that it is, can be taken as a step forward for Singapore? Or will it be seen as weak? Yeah, a weak governance. It's like you can't have it both ways because you either <laughs> want a government that listens to both sides eventually. Yeah. <laughs> oh. is it either way someone is, so someone, either way someone's going to be angry. Uh. No Difficult how to be government. Mm. <laughs> 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 Just don't paint anything. Law. Like no, Singapore already very clean already eh, in terms of like, like the, the spaces that we're allowed to just like put like yeah. advertisements on and all yeah, this kind yeah. of stuff, right? Yeah. We can only then, do graffiti at skip. You know, then <laughs> can now one see great also. No, but shouldn't there be a like uh, art focus group like mix, mix of all like notable or Singaporean artists and then there can be a vote on it since There'll they are like- There will be people who better. also complain that you're not including these artists mm. or you're not including the voices <laughs> this way. Oh. Or, Oh, Wait, we should do a referendum. You have to sign up. You have to own self sign up, you know. No, but who, is the, who decides that this is the representation of- I have the artists. best recommendation. Everybody gets a voting day off to go and vote on the public referendum about whether we should remove it or not. For ev But this is going to set a precedence for every single thing that people are going to argue about. And therefore, we are going to be so much more democratic. Okay, I think right, <laughs> we don't have to do it physically. Uh, Everybody just needs to log in to SingPass. Uh, uh, online, uh, yes or no? Uh, the problem uh, is-, is, is the majority is not always right. Why be You're so real. <laughs> <laughs> the reason the why we have real structures questions. and, and organisations and all this kind of stuff is because we get the doctors to help us make the medically sound decisions, mm. the informed decisions. We get the scientists, right? We get the people who understand economics or you know, this kind of thing, right? To make the decisions, ma. But if we're really going to let, like, let some like, Aling, Aling, Aseng. Uh, eh, Is that what uh, you imagine a typical Singaporean to be? <laughs> <laughs> Aling. Then, yeah, like, like, hey, why you smoke down there? Take down. Then they vote. Then everybody all, yeah, hey, why ah, uh, why ah? Uh? <laughs> no, that's why, no that's, why I said, that's why I suggested it to be artists, but like a, artists. an anonymous vote. Yeah, but like uh, you're going to Singapore, end up excluding ma. some artists. Like what if the- You don't know who is inside. Only the oh, anonymous artist vote. Yeah. Who 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 picks these artists? So it's kind of like oh, uh, no, Oscars. No. Like you don't really know who judge. No, but with <laughs> the Oscars, <laughs> 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 the Oscars <laughs> include <laughs> every single person <laughs> who's <laughs> ever been nominated yeah, for an Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> no, the then Academy. after that, somebody will say the vote <laughs> finished already, right? Then the artist who didn't get to vote will realize, how come I didn't get to vote? Yeah. Then he put a line. And then so everyone's going to say- as long as your occupation put artists, yeah. you are given a, a seven day window to to apply and, and to, to put your name in your and also handle. to participate in the <laughs> in the <laughs> in the voting. But yeah. how can you determine whether someone just decided to become an artist today? Uh, based to on this? your last year's text. Sing pass. 
Your sing pass yeah, occupation, occupation what? No, no the self-employed oh, artist. Yeah, like your employment, right? <laughs> Yeah, so what if I've never painted something in my life but I wanted to, so I decided to become then a self-employed Then you're not an artist. artist. La. Because if you don't have the qualifications yeah. and to prove it, yeah. then you cannot call yourself Okay, so how about this? You have to be an artist that has sold at least 10 paintings or been commissioned to do no. work before. Mm, no, I think paid. a street artist who have painted at least one mural in Singapore before that was previously passed. So you got four passed. people voting. <laughs> so you're saying it can only be street mural artists? Yes. Because I think this is because it's in the art this is so broad man. there are a lot of artists with different uh, exactly. styles mediums and, and yeah. whatnot. But then street artists seems to be like the No, but street artists got so many different ones, but got the ones that only do geometry on the Yeah, but murals. it's still street. Okay, uh, let's let's use an example okay. and see whether it's fair. Okay. okay. So us as YouTubers, we post something somewhat and then it's like wow offensive yeah but we think it's not offensive huh? we think it should be out there ma. Yeah, so well, now the government come in and say youtubers come and vote on whether this piece of content should be should stay up or be taken down now how do you determine whether a youtuber should be counted in that vote or not what if somebody just started Singaporean a YouTube channel YouTubers today YouTubers okay. YouTubers with more than 20,000 uh, subscribers uh, uh, what and if are active how do you determine how do you determine activeness? Like that means the posting frequency is at least once a month. Ah. No, you know, last, what's, like, the, you know what's the difficulty here? It's because we are trying to measure offense. Yeah. Like when you talk about economists, doctors, and all this, right? They are measuring things and giving opinions and advice on things that are factual. Somewhat mm. absolute. Not opinion. Mm. And yeah. so like when there's something like that, then you ask people to come and vote. Obviously, like YouTubers who perhaps want to open the door to future yeah. such content, right? Will surely vote yes for money or for content mm. or for no, what? No, plus the so judgment of art is so dangerous because there are so many art that we now deem as completely revolutionary that was completely offensive during its time also. For example? Van Gogh's art was, okay, for example, Van Gogh's art wasn't offensive, but no one appreciated <laughs> it until yeah. he died. And then literally 50 years later, then suddenly it's like, oh my God, it's beautiful. <laughs> you know, like with, when it comes with art, is there's also the this, time element yeah. when it comes to judgment. So, do you want to remove something that in 50 years time everyone went, wait, that was beautiful actually? Mm -hmm. No, the crazy thing is right. Honestly, URA is not asking for much. They only want to remove the secret. But maybe but it's they the secret that makes it. the rest of the painting, ma. But the secret makes it. The secret. Uh, yeah. Then the, the government. Let, no. Then let's say the government keep on chop and say, is you you can post a podcast, but then sorry, you need to keep. You need to remove this part. You need to remove that part. You need to remove the mention. You need to remove the mention right. that. Then yeah. after a while, like as an artist also, right, and a creative, right, you're gonna be, you're gonna feel like what? Then what? It, it destroys the message that you're trying to yeah. convey already. What? But that's what happens. What? It does happen, <laughs> but I think that again, like, it, it, it takes me back to how there are more tactful ways to approach certain things mm. and. It's, you have to play the game. You cannot complain that this is the game that you don't want to play. I think it's similar to, so look, so with YouTube, for example, right? It is not a group of art, um, YouTubers that determine it is like IMDA, for example, there's a body. Or like when we spoke to Dick Lee and when his song got banned, for example, there was a ministry that decided it. Right? It wasn't that people just voted together. And so I think no one really, at the end of the day, through history's eyes, do we say that was wrong or that was right? I think it's okay for them to be a body to determine these things and then we just yeah. take and, it and, as is. And even later on, the body might be wrong also. And you for know? them to recognize it also, like with mm, the degree mm. one, they, in the end, they reverse the decision and then they they, they let it through. Yeah. And it went viral. Yeah. Okay, so it's time for painting of the episode. Which we have given the topic for today. So if JP, you can uh, mm -hmm. do the honors and bring the painting over here. Basically, Gravity and The Daily Catch-Up has been supporting Shaping Hearts, which is an inclusive arts festival supporting artists with disabilities. It's a very meaningful project for us and we hope that you can find it too. So this is uh, by Yap Ning Ping. He's wheelchair bound because he has a spinal cord injury and so he has difficulties with his hands and legs and yet he was able to paint the painting called Shop House. Yeah, look at this. It's amazing. What is watercolor? Ah? I believe so and it's extremely beautiful. It is. It's like realism or something also, right? I'm not the person to ask. Like, oh, it's it photorealistic, is it? Is that what they call it? A bit, a bit. A Actually, bit, a bit. Huh? Actually yeah. yeah. So uh, for Mr. Yap, right, he basically uses a lot of the memories that he's had growing up in the 70s in Singapore and he mimics them and puts it onto canvas wow. for us to also relive his memories and I think it's absolutely beautiful. The pens here, so, yeah. I think. Very reminiscent. Uh. Reminiscent. Is mm. that the word? Nostalgic. I also don't that know. That is the one. Really? That is the one I was looking Very for. Very nice.
So if you're looking for meaningful art pieces such as this, you can join us at Our Tampanese Hub on the 19th of October. We'll see you there. Yeah, Shaping Hearts. Google it or links down below. Bye-bye. So thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Let us know what you think of the art in the comment down below. Okay, see you. <laughs> well, last time my father used to stay in a kampong. So oh. last time the there's this like toilet system. So the toilet is usually outside and it's yep. just a, maybe just a hut, but there is like a, a duck hole with a bucket, mm. for example. So there will be this designated like shit guy. <gasps> uh, uh, okay, let's call him Poo Poo Man. Oh, so the, so, oh yeah, okay. so the toilet yeah. man, he will always come around if, with the bucket to collect your shit. Oh. You think last time people's like shit schedule, right? It's like, so Wednesday is the collection. So Thursday is where everybody knows yeah, this yeah, is the yeah. cleanest day. I have to go and shit. Yeah, I think yeah, 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 yeah. Tuesday nobody shits. Because yeah, yeah, they know yeah, it's yeah. smelly as heck. It's like an opposite thing cut, man. What <laughs> <laughs> fills you up? Yeah. Yeah. No, then if I miss the collection, eh? Just oh. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, oh. throw in the whole spare bucket, lah. No. And then the whole neighborhood will know who never throw their bucket. <laughs> <laughs>